So I'm not even going to ask why you guys wanted to know how to rig tentacles. Uh, we're just going to build it and pretend this video never happened, okay? All right, so uh, cool. Well, you're on your own to catch your own squid, but if you're watching this video, I'm sure you've probably got your own lined up anyways. However, I was able to snag mine from here. Link in description. To start, I'll add a single bone to the origin of the tentacle. I'll make sure to check on in front so that I'm going to be able to see these bones from wherever, since I currently don't have x-ray vision. It's in the mail. I'll then position the tail down towards the end of the tentacle and begin to subdivide our bone structure rather than extruding each one out, since I know I want the same length of each bone, roughly. I'll push the end bone in just a little bit and extrude outwards a final bone. I'll clear the parent entirely and just rename this to be IK and uncheck deform since we're only going to use it as a controller. With the end deformation bone selected, I'll swap over into pose mode and head to our bone constraints. I'll select the inverse kinematics constraint, setting our target to be the same rig and our bone to be the IK bone we just created. Now when we move our IK controller, our whole tentacle will move with it. Well, theoretically, we actually haven't skinned anything just yet. I'll pop out of pose mode to select our mesh first and reselect our rig last. I'll hit Control P with automatic weights since I'm lazy and Blender is likely far more capable of developing a competent weight paint than I am. Now when we go ahead and move our controller, our computer will chug a little bit, but we have motion. On my mesh in particular, you can see that it does look a little segmented in areas, which could be fixed by adding more bones. However, the trade-off there is performance, so it's up to you. You may have noticed that I didn't add a pole bone for our IK. Instead, I'm going to add a new bone at the origin and position it over the first two bones, just so that it appears differently in edit mode. Let's just call this one rotation. I'll then add a circle mesh and place it off to the side because we are then going to use its shape as a visual representation of our recently added rotation bone. I'll make sure to uncheck deform as well and select our custom shape for our viewport display. Now I can edit the circle object in edit mode to update the visuals for our rotation bone. This adds absolutely no extra functionality, it's entirely cosmetic. But who says rigging has to look bad, right? With our origin bone selected, I'll head over to our bone constraints again. This time, I'll select copy rotation. With our rig as the target, we will also select our rotation bone and set our space transforms to be local. So now we can use the bone for rotation while also being constrained to wherever our IK controller is, and the rotation will propagate throughout each bone in our chain. I find having only two controllers like this is far easier to handle in the long run. Now that we have a rig set up, let's put it to the test and give it a quick animation. I'm just going to make a swinging animation, which I'll start by placing our IK controller over to the top left and keying its location. I'll then head over to frame 60 and key its location down towards the bottom right. Kind of cool already, as we can see both constraints in action, but we're not done yet. I'm going to rotate our rotation bone at a random angle and key its rotation on frame 1. I'll again do the same for frame 60, trying to rotate it at an angle that indicates a finished pose. Still looking okay, but I think we can do better. I'll hit Control tab in our dope sheet to switch into our curve editor. Here we're going to add some procedural animation in the form of noise. With the IK bone selected, I'll select the X transform and head to the modifiers panel in the editor. I'll add a noise modifier, which by default gives us this pretty chunky animation. Let's bring the scale up to something like 23, just to smooth everything out a little bit. I'll repeat that step for the Y transform, this time bumping the scale up to 40 and the strength down to around 0.18. This will help us get some secondary motion that would otherwise be a terrible pain in the butt to accomplish manually. So now add some more tentacles to the scene, rearrange and offset some of the keyframes amongst each of them, 
hit render, and now you've got yourself a scene that could rival that of even Lovecraft himself. Well, that is going to conclude it for this video, and unfortunately, that's going to be it for the first season of Let's Build It in Blender. I had a lot of fun working on this series, and I definitely learned a lot along the way, so I hope you guys did too. Now, this is not goodbye. This is just see you next year. We've got some things lined up for the next season that I really want to try, and uh, we'll probably be talking a little bit about it in the upcoming months, so definitely stay tuned for that. But you didn't stay this long into the video to watch me talk. You want to hear the jokes, right? Why did the octopus beat a shark in a fight? Well, turns out octopi are uh, better armed, we'll say. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What do you call a place where an octopus is sitting? Well, that place is octopied. Why did the octopus cross the road? Well, for that one, you're going to have to stay tuned until next season. I've been Chunk. This has been Let's Build It in Blender Season 1. Later, skater.